Hey guys, this is Foxtrot bringing you another commentary. Uh, this is the very first commentary I'm doing uh, from someone that's actually sent me their replay through my email. Now it's been a while since uh, I promised to do these. I'm finally getting around to doing them. This is the first one. This is by uh, sent in by the Maokai, Cats OGR. So thank you for sending in your replay. Um, if you, you guys want to send me your replays, send them to foxtrotblow at gmail.com. I believe that's what it is. It's on my channel page regardless. So. Let's jump right into it. First off, uh, Maokai in the new Season 3 jungle. I haven't played it too much. I played Maokai quite a lot in Season 2. I quite liked him. He's a very good gank heavy jungler. And he's a very good, like, um, one sec, I have to change this. Right. Got rid of Fog of War. He's a very good, uh, like, protect the carry kind of jungler as well. Um, he used to go double gold for 10, but they removed heart gold and they made Spirit Stone basically do what Philosopher Stone does as well. So it's interesting to see what he'll build. Because uh, I don't think the double, double gold for 10 build is that viable anymore. Um, as far as like the level 1 roots go from Maokai, Maokai used to stack saplings on wraiths and then go to blue. Uh, because the wraiths would just die with two saplings, or three saplings technically, and a basic attack. But he can't do that anymore, and exactly what he's doing, he's stacking saplings onto wolves. Now if you get some health onto these and then moves onto blue, all should be well and good. Uh, we are at 123, 124, and uh, he started with a Hunter's Machete and 5 Health Potions. Now this is what I would start with personally, because I'd build this, I'd build this Hunter's Machete into a Spirit Stone. Um, his team looks like they're just going to be defending him and not helping him, which is not going to be very good for Malachi. He could lose like... Uh, they, these guys, if, you, if you're um, playing... Uh, and you're not jungling, to help your jungler out if you can. Like, he lost, like, almost a third of his health just because these guys can be asked to help him, which is kind of kind of lame. Uh, it's unnecessary damage he's taken, and he's wasted a health potion because of it. But he got a decent amount of help onto this golem. Uh, he should just smite this down. Yeah, pretty much got the last hit on that. Uh, and then I'll see what route he takes. He should probably do a full clear because he uses smite on blue, which means he's not going to be able to use his smite on red now to like get a quick level 3 and gank top or something which would have been a pretty cool route to go but he won't be able to do that now that he's used his smite on blue so he'll just be clearing out and uh, talk a bit about the matchups um, Udaya, Udir, sorry I get in trouble with saying Udaya Udir, Udir is um, not a very aggressive jungler so there shouldn't be too much interaction between between him and Maokai um, so there shouldn't be too much going on there. However, I'll talk a bit about the lanes. Malkai is a very, very good gank, and because he has so much CC, you need two things when you're ganking. You either need um, a lot of CC, or you need a lot of burst damage. And because Malkai has so much CC, he has two of them just with himself, a snare and a knockback. Um, you don't really need a lot of CC on the lanes, which means people like Vlad are actually pretty easy to gank for, despite having no CC themselves, because Malkai had enough on his own, although Morg with a spell shield will completely nullify all of the CC that Malkai throws at her, so it'll be very hard to gank her and we'll see what happens there. Malkai is pretty much finishing off his full clear route now. Um, one thing I will say as well, like with this new, um, with the old meta, sorry, of these kind of tanky CC junglers like Malkai, Nautilus, people like that, um, they're not as strong as they are now as they used to be. They're not weak by any means, but they're just not, like, really, really strong. And so if you're playing an aggressive jungler, you can really take advantage of that nowadays because people are very low. Look at Malkai's health. He's like 300 health just from jungling. Now, like I said, this Morg is just going to shield anything that Malkai throws at her, so he's not going to be able to get this gank at all. Vlad's used his Ghost and his Ignite, but Morg's Flash, so it's not that bad. But it's really hard to gank this Morg, unless he gets there at a time when her shield is down, or she's out of mana, or something like that. It's going to be hard to gank. Top would be a really easy lane to gank, and Top actually did, did just get ganked by Pantheon. Although it looks like Jarvan's not doing anything. Okay, Jarvan's kind of AFK for no reason, it's really odd. But this would be a really good time for Malgai to gank, which is what he's looking at. Because Panth's out of mana, he's kind of pushed up. Uh, the mini ways are an okay place, but okay, Jarvan's gone back, which is odd. Uh, but now Malkai can just soak this XP, or 
or not. Or, or okay, he doesn't right. He's I don't know what Malachi's doing. Right, he's walking away. He should be. There's no harm in soaking up this XP top because no one's there to get it. You don't have to push the lane. You know, laners get very mad at you when you push the lane, and there are only certain circumstances when you should be pushing the lane. But he should be here soaking up this XP. There's a few creeps that are dying. That's free XP. It's free gold. Um, there's no reason not to do that. Instead, he's just going to take his wraiths. Um, but yeah, he, he should. You know, it's pretty much like a laner's dream just getting that free XP. So when well, you can, just take it. And again, this this gank mid, which he's looking for, isn't going to work if she's got a shield up. Okay. Well, she didn't shield the snare, but she shielded the knockback, so there was no dice there. Now, that's something which you should be doing when you're playing Malachi. Like, right now, if he flash snared, is it snare up? It's up now. If he flash snared Morg right here, her shield is still down for five seconds. This would be a kill. But he, he's not seeing the, not recognising the opportunity, and he's waiting too long now that her shield's just going to be up again. So, I'd be surprised if he even goes for this. He'll probably just back off. Because there's not really, although she's out of mana now. But she's too far to her tower, so yeah. Don't be afraid to use your flash aggressively to get uh, ganks early. We knew Morg didn't have her flash because she blew it earlier, which Malachi did, which is a good job. But that would have been a kill there. Um, something I will say, actually, um, earlier, I'll just put direct cam onto Ezreal quickly. Um, is that what Malachi did, which was really good, is that he snared Morg. Okay, I'm taking it off. Snared Morg. Uh, he was standing here. Morg was here. He snared her. And then he ran behind her and knocked her that way, or tried to at least, but she's she spell shielded it. Um, what that would have done would have knocked her forward like to here, from here, instead of knocking her back to here. And that's not that individually, it's not that big a difference. Oh, it looks like he's getting invaded here, but Udai has got nothing on this Malachi. There's no way Udai can invade here. He should be dead. And he's got his flash up, so Malachi's got his flash up, and Udai has nothing. Let's see, his Q is up now. If I were Malkite, I'd be flash queuing this guy right here. But he's not going to. Although his snare is up. But they've just got no damage. This is unfortunate. But again, he's very hesitant to use his flash aggressively to get these early kills. Uh, which are pretty much free kills for him. Um, but anyway, what I was saying, he's maxing his W. That's really, really interesting. I've never seen that done before. I don't know whether that's like a, a season 3 thing because now single target damage uh, is very popular. But I have never seen someone max a W on Maokai. That might be... I'm not really in a place to comment because I'm not a Maokai pro, but... I've seen... Usually what I would do is that I would get... Um, I would start with E and then get Q and then get either my W or my E at level 3 depending whether I was ganking or not. But basically you have two ranks in your E, then you max your Q, then you max your W, and then you finish your E. That's what used to happen anyway. Um, guess times are changing, or this is just really bad, either one, I'm not sure. Anyway, what I was saying like five minutes ago, I always go off on these tangents, I apologise. But basically when you're ganking Maokai, you want to snare them and knock them backwards. You want to run behind them and knock them, rather than just knocking them randomly. Because even though the gap itself isn't that big... Um, it it is between, you know, the difference between doing it right and wrong is like a flash difference, which is pretty huge. Now, this is something quite interesting, um, top, where this Jarvan, even though he's so pushed and, and like, overextended, he's got so much lane pressure because his panther is so weak and out of mana that Udai can't do anything. He's level 4, which is really, really low for, for 9 minutes in. Um, and here we'll see. So he couldn't, if, if Malgai had ran behind him and queued him there, then that probably would have been a kill, but he did get stunned by Pantheon as he ran in, so he couldn't do that, which is unfortunate. That gank probably would have been more successful if Jarvan had baited himself a bit harder or tried to initiate it, but if Malgai was initiating that, they were too close to the tower, they would have just run away, which is exactly what happened. But um, this Jarvan, what this Jarvan's doing is really good, because if this Pantheon's out of mana and kind of low on health, well, just if he's out of mana, there's literally no way... You know, unless Jarvan goes full retard, there is no way that Pantheon can assist in any way, shape, or form to the uh, gank. Unless he, like, flash ignites it or something like that. Um, and Udai can't one-on-one -on -one this Jarvan, no way. Even when Jarvan's on this health, if Udai was on full health, I mean, he's level 5 now, but he was level 4 against level 7. 
There's just no nothing going there. We'll see. Let's see what's happening in bot lane. Bot lane should be in Ez's favour, although they're very even at the moment, which is actually kind of bad for Ez, because Ez is very good in lane, and Vayne is not as good as Ez. Um, Nami could be in trouble, though. She's she she's tunnel visioning so hard on that pink ward that she's had to flash away. And now Ez has to heal, although that was a completely wasted heal. Not sure why I did that, but yeah. It, don't don't get distracted on your bot lane. You know, don't always be aware of what their AD where their AD is and what he can do to you because that vein just destroyed them and that could have been very, very ugly and in a lane where these guys should be uh dominating to have to go off a situation like that where they had to blow like a lot of summoners is not good at all. Having said that, if you're a vein that was a good like that was a good uh, recognising an opportunity that they could capitalise on people's mistakes. So that was good by Vayne. Now I'll, look, I'll talk a bit about Malachi's item build now. He's gone back. Um, on his first back he bought a Spirit Stone and a and T1 Boots, I believe. Which is good, that's what I would have bought. And now he's bought. he went back and he bought Tier 2 Boots, Ninja Tabby and a Ward and a Health Potion. Now Ninja Tabby is... they just warded their blue. Um, so I have to be aware of that when it comes around again. Right here, Malachi should be going really aggressive on this Udaya because Morg is Morg is better at this stage in the game than Vlad is, but Morg is completely out of mana. Like she can't do anything. She can't even use her ult. She probably can't even use her Q. And Malachi has red buff, so he could be going very aggressive. Like Vlad has gone very aggressive here. It's Vlad and his pulls, man. It's crazy. He uses his pull like all the time. I mean, it gets a small speed boost when you activate your W, but I'm not sure what he's doing. And now Malachi is clearing the ward, the warding. Yeah, um, but talking about uh, this iron build again, this is really, if I were Malachi as well, I'd be running around here, like around through Try, around here, rather than just staying in this bush for no reason. There's no play to be made. And now he's just going to sit in this bush, and they're not going to face check him, like, if they did face check him, they're going to die, or, okay, Vayne's going to face check him, and have to blow a summoner, probably, yeah, and she has to flash away, I mean, never face check, if the jungle has just been bombed, why would you face, just don't bother face checking, just play it safe, there's no need to face check either, because this wave is pushing into the tower, so you can just wait for it to arrive at your tower, it's not like you're getting zoned or anything like that. But now this Janna is staying and is dead. And that's first blood. Well, that's 13 minutes for first blood, which is very uh, a late first blood. And that was a bit of an anticlimactic. Let's zoom in on Janna right here. Bit of an anticlimactic first blood. Poor Janna. And um, it's odd to see it last that long. But yeah, what Janna did there was kind of bad in the sense that towers do not equal safety, right? Just because a tower's there doesn't mean you're safe, which is the mistake she made. But now that they've got this bot tower, which is really good, um, they're going to have a lot of pressure, bot, a lot of lane pressure bot, because... We'll see if anything happens here. Nah. If uh, Morg hadn't wasted her Q trying to hit Ez, she could have just Q'd Vlad then when he got a uh, bear stance slapped in the face by Udara and stunned, and then they probably could have one comboed him. But talking about this bot lane pressure again, Dragon is completely determined, mostly determined I should say, by how strong your bot lane is. Um, and now that these guys have lost their tower, the enemy team has lost their tower, bot, bot lane pressure is huge. However, all of bot has gone, like, Malachi's team is not in a position to defend Dragon, so if these guys are on it, okay. This is a really good, like, recognised opportunity to do Dragon. However, I don't think they can do it for free at all because it's a bit early and um, they don't have that much damage on it. Vlad should be helping right here. He should not be farming. Vlad should be with Malachi. Malachi might be able to try and steal this, but if he gets snared, he's not going to be able to. And he gets snared, so he's not able to. Um, but, I mean, Vlad is still farming. I mean, he's still not doing anything. Vlad should be doing something right here. I can understand why Vlad chose not to, to help 
chose not to do anything because I mean it's bad trying to defend dragon when you can't defend dragon is a really surefire way to like to kind of die and to just it's just a bad situation so it's understandable if you don't want to defend dragon but they could have defended dragon so you know if you can't defend it then don't defend it but if you can defend it do defend it and you know Vlad just made a bad decision there on not defending it um this was the only problem here what happened here is that they got Janna and Vayne die two free kills for nothing really. They're feeding this Ez. Ez is now two two zero. Uh for what reason? For no reason really. I mean Vayne and Janna overstayed their welcome and that was pretty much all there was to it. Okay, Panther snoots his heal. Panther's heal. Right, okay. But he doesn't have ignite, Panther's heal. Right. Uh I will mention this is like thirteen hundred EO, roughly, twelve twelve hundred, thirteen hundred, I believe. Uh, so that's what you're seeing, and um, oh, it's good. Good to get a free kill. Though. It looks like that blew quite a lot to Tower Diver, and we'll see what happens here. Malachi is just doing red buff right now, when he should be stopping this right here and coming down. He's been doing it for a while too, while his team just gets chased. They're still getting chased, and he's still on red buff. Luckily only Vlad died, but this is something you should be doing as well. Um, it's something which I make the mistake a lot of. I always have to remind myself to not do this or to do this. So it would be, it's, um, if you're clearing a camp, if you're doing a camp and someone is in trouble, just stop the camp. It's counter jungling yourself for like 50 gold is not that big a deal compared to trying to save someone, okay? <clears throat> Sorry, it's um, if uh, if because if you do save someone, then that that's such a huge swing, and it makes I mean, if you consider in like people's emotions, which you really should be when you're playing um solo queue, because people's emotions do get the better of them. You know, if you can save people, or if you don't save people, more importantly, people get very angry at you. But say like even if you're doing wraiths or something, and this Jarvan got ganked. You could run up, if this Jarvan managed to run to like here, you would be able to get there in time. Like even though it looks like it's half the map, which is a huge distance, it's not a huge distance. You could be say you could save someone. Just don't be afraid to try, it's a really good habit to get into. Just stop just stop jungling and start helping. It's uh, a pretty good change. It's like counter ganking as well. Um it's kinda like counter ganking exactly, except it's more reactive than pro proactive, where if you can do nothing but counter counter gank all game, farm and counter gank, then there's nothing wrong with that really. Counter ganking is so so strong. I mean I've won games just by getting off like a really like one counter gank. You get off a good counter gank early and the the swing is so huge. It's just it's a really strong asset. Uh but it takes practice. You've got to be in like the enemy enemy jungler's head. Uh, and it, it just takes takes a while to get used to that to that kind of thing. So, but it's worth practicing. Counter ganking is worth practicing. Um. Anyway, looking top. Jarvan's just diving this panth. Jarvan's kind of won this top lane really hard, which is really good. But right here, um, mid lane. They're poking these guys out really hard, but there's not really anything going. Like. Uh, we'll see. This, did Janna get caught? Yeah, Janna got caught without Janna's gonna die, which is cool, but we'll see if they can like, actually take this tower now because they're using a lot of time kind of doing nothing. Like, Malka could be farming his jungle or anything, but instead he's decided to help fight mid, which is good because they got this tower, but if they hadn't killed that Janna or if they hadn't have been able to get this tower, then he's just wasted a lot of time. Like, if you think about it, look at the farm, we're 20 minutes in. And Udai doesn't even have 50 CS, and Malka has 52 CS. It's, um, th these farm levels are really, really low. This is like, um, just like when junglers are unsure how to allocate their time. Like, I don't want to make assumptions or sound harsh, but, um, it looks as though these junglers are not, a are not aware of how to allocate their time. And so they may be spending too much time ganking, which we saw a bit with mid. Uh, he, he tried to gank more too much. And like there, they spend a lot of time trying to uh, get that tower down. 
when they're not, and they're spending that time not farming, like right here he's not doing his walls, when really, I mean there's no reason not to do those walls. He's going to go help bot, oops. Well, I just, I just tapped out, sorry. Uh, he's going to help, um, going to help his bot lane, which, which is cool, I mean, this is good, he's going to get all this farm, provided he does get this farm, doesn't lose it all to tower. Uh, but instead, because now that his top lane is so pushed, and his bot lane is so pushed, this means that mid is now... Java just jumped into the middle of four of them and didn't die. That is remarkable. He sh there's 20 minutes in and they don't have the damage to kill a Jarvan who has a Phage and a Giant's Belt. That is pretty depressing. They somehow should have been able to kill that guy. Um, but Vlad died uh, over here like, I don't know, like a minute ago. And I didn't mention it because I was already talking about something. But there is something I should mention, I think, where you... You achieve something, but then you like try to achieve too much. You overstay your welcome, and you kind of you you fail basically. And that's kind of what happened there. These guys push down this tower mid, and then they uh, try to get this next tower or something. They stayed for too long, and they got caught out by the people who were coming back alive. Now we'll see what happens in this team fight because Vlad just suicided there pretty hard. Uh, Malka is out of mana as well though. Jarvan just dunks on this vein so hard, which is always. Uh, very uh, entertaining, fulfilling to see. There's nothing happening. Ez isn't even here. Okay, now Ez is here. We'll see what happens. Should be able to kill this Udai and this Morg. They should be able to mop up. This is the thing that like, they've won this fight really hard, but they've only killed one person. They only killed uh, Vayne. And Vlad died. So they did win this fight, which means they can now take advantage of this right here. And again, Janna's just suiciding because she thinks she's safe under tower. But again, Janna, you're not safe just because you're saying next to the tower. Um, yeah, they won this fight, which means they can get this objective. But because they didn't actually kill the enemy team, it means that they've just gone back and they've healed up, which means that now they're all here. And you can't, you have to be very, very careful. Like again, these guys have kind of overstayed their welcome. They, have, they could play this, oops, they could play this really well here though. And maybe pick up a few kills because the enemy team has played it even worse. But this this Ez is very very greedy, and he's kind of baited this Malkai into his death here. Yeah, you see, like Malkai died there, which was any time you die, it's your mistake. Like he shouldn't have tried to save Ez, but it, Ez really just baited the crap out of that Malkai. It's kind of Ez's fault that he died. Um, so whenever like greed is never good. I mean it's just a mistake, but just try not to get greedy. Uh okay, Ez has home guard as well. I would I mean I'm not an A D carry player, but I I dunno. If this guy had Fura then he'd just be able to position so well on team fights. I don't really understand why you wouldn't get Fura if you're playing an A D. But that's just my opinion. Um So so yeah, like I was saying, this this greedy when Ez got greedy, it kind of screwed over Malkai. But also because they didn't get many kills, it meant that they didn't have as much time. Even though they won the fight, they didn't have as much time to do what they wanted. If they had killed all those people that were on low health in that team fight, they might have been able to get this inhib tower, maybe the inhib as well. But Dragon has respawned. Um, they knew when Dragon died, which means that they should have had it timed. But because uh, I probably presume that it wasn't timed. This snare right here, this snare on Pantheon was um, a wasted snare because he. Um, there are two reasons why two reasons why he'd want a snare. One for the CC and two for the gap closer. Uh, I'll just I'll mention it after this fight's happened. Moore gets a really good ult off actually, so this should be a really good fight for for the blue team. Although they they focused all their efforts onto killing Nami, which is the support, so. It might not go that well. We'll see. See what's all right. Morg dies. Vane dies. And Janet's gonna die too. And will Jarvan die? No, it wasn't even close. Awesome. So yeah, that was. I'm not sure how they will lost that fight. I mean, four of them died. So they're gonna get this dragon for free. Um, they. It's a bit early in the game to be wanting to like Baron or maybe getting the inhib. I think. They could, they could have got the inhib here, which would have been a better choice. However, I mean that kind of decision making is very, very hindsight because 
at the time it would have just seemed too risky and that's completely understandable it would have been a risky play so you know it's uh it would be unreasonable to say that this guy is bad for not going to game in hit or whatever although i'd never say that of course um but yeah that team fight should have gone a lot better for blue team because Moore got a really nice ult off over here. But I'll talk about the snare. What Malachi did was he was standing in this bush and Panther was here and he snared at point blank. Like I was saying, there are two reasons, two reasons why he'd want to snare. Um, and that is uh, one for the CC because it immobilizes you and two for the um, gap closer. And he didn't need to gap close because he was point blank he was standing right next to him and he didn't want he didn't need to cc because there was no one else like no teammate around him to benefit from that cc so he should have saved his route until his friends were near or until well he should have just saved his route basically it was a bit of a wasted route um i'll talk about this guy's item build in a sec as well but now he's just getting blue he doesn't need to go back right here because he's not low on health and with his blue buff he's gonna heal up um get his mana get a lot of mana back and his team is being pushed down at mid so he should just be going to help his team but instead he is going to recall which i think is a mistake we'll see if he okay he bought a kindle gem um i don't think you need to re like it's not like oh guys just wait i've got my kindle gem it's not a huge item or anything like that uh it's not like getting back and buying an infinity edge or last whisper or ga or something uh, it's just a kindle gem but now maokai isn't here for this fight if maokai was here Right, because that was a pretty good engage by Jarvan, uh, catching Vayne out. If Maokai was here, then um, this game could be over. Like I, th I know that sounds very, very, like, really, Fox Rock? We've got 15 minutes left in this game, and you're saying this could be over right here. Honestly, this is like a 7k gold lead. I, it's, the way the purple team is playing, the lead isn't going to get higher than this, I don't think. So they're actually, even though I don't realise it, probably that they're like at the strongest point. I mean, Ez is 7-0, he's really, really fed, and their tanks are squishy as hell. So there's nothing stopping this Ezra right now. If Malka was there, they would have at least killed 2, 3, maybe even 4 people. This Vlad is engaged with his pool, which is never a good idea. But there's no one around to punish him, really, apart from Vayne. But she's got bad positioning, so she's dead. Vlad does die, though. Um... But yeah, if Malco was there, they would have killed so many people that they would have been able to get this inhib, or just do Baron, or the enemy team would have surrendered, or something like that. I mean, when, when you get a really favourable team fight off, and you're already behind, when you lose a team fight, and you're already quite far behind, then that's when people surrender, that's when people give up. So, um, it's hard to, you don't really want to be focused on the mentality. Alright, right here, they they tower dive, which is really greedy. And Ez chased Morg, which was really, really greedy, and just died. And Nami is now dead as well because of Ez's greed, and Maokai is really low. So, I've already said about how this Ez is greedy, and this is kind of what happens when you're 8-0. and This is like the 8-0 and syndrome, right? You get way too greedy because you think you're king of the world. Well, what happened there was, okay, not only did they achieve nothing, right, they got like... See, 300 health off this tower, which is not that much at all. Uh, not only did they achieve nothing, Ez died and lost his uh, killing spree, his 8 and 0 killing spree. Um, Ez baited Nami into dying here as well, and Malkai was really low too. But basically, just don't get greedy. I mean, greed just, if you're winning and you want to finish a game, just don't play greedy, just play normally, just play smart. Now Vlad is trying to help. Vl whoa, 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 sorry. Vlad tried to help Jarvan and then just instantly pulled, ghosted, and run away. I'm pretty sure when a Vlad pulls on the spot like that, avoiding nothing, avoiding no CC, no damage, nothing, just pulling on the spot and then ghosting. I'm pretty sure that's Vlad's equivalent of wetting himself. When Vlad wets himself, he turns into a pool of blood and runs away. Now this Vlad has done that quite a lot this game. I'm pretty sure this guy is is like wetting himself left, right and centre. Like, they're gonna need a one of these like man diapers for this Vlad. We'll see if this happens a lot more because I guarantee you this Vlad is gonna be wetting himself a lot more this game. He tends to do that a lot. Whenever he sees an enemy he presses W. So we'll see. But again 
what happened there was that that Jarvan overstayed his welcome because they did something good by pushing down mid, although Ed's kind of mucked that up. Um, but yeah, he just got caught out. And especially with Pantheon, who has his global ulti, uh, if you get caught out like that, then you're pretty screwed. Um, you have to be very, very careful, basically. Now, it's Ez is 8-1, but honestly, he's not playing very well. I mean, he's playing okay, sorry. I shouldn't be hard too hard on him, but he's not... Like, if he lost this game, he'd probably be like, oh my god, new team, Elo Hell. Um, and honestly, if he lost this game, I'd be like, well... Yeah, I, I wouldn't have much sympathy for him for losing this game, because he may be playing well, but he's not helping his team win, basically. That's all there is to it. I mean... If they do win, it'll probably be because, like, Ez will be a big factor if they do win, but at the moment he's not doing any of that to help his team win. So just because he's 8-1 does not mean that he's, you know, like, carrying the game. It means that he has the potential to carry the game, and he should be carrying the game, but he's not carrying the game because of the way he's playing. He's getting too greedy, and he's not achieving anything. Um, I don't think the enemy team can really stop Ez doing this drag, although this is kind of, like, very disorganised by purple team, they're not really doing anything. This is something that I was saying, like, the junglers don't really have any, like, no one has a lot of farm. Vlad has 120 farm, 31 minutes in, which is pretty low, like, very, very low. Everyone's farm is really low, but there has been a lot of fighting, to be fair, but I mean, this is kind of the difference between lower elo and higher elo. Uh, like, mechanical differences are pretty big, and that includes CSing. People don't know how to CS. And not CSing properly. Now, Ez has recalled here, so they don't want to be fighting. This Nami, okay, she got caught out, but she's got a really good disengage off with her ult. She misses her bubble like she's been doing all game. Vlad wets himself in the middle of the team again, chasing Vayne. Uh, this is actually a pretty interesting fight. Jarvan gets a really nice ulti off. Um, this Pantheon focused on Nami, but this should be a pretty good fight for, for Purple team, for Malkai's team. Although, it kind of looks like they're not actually going to get any kills out of it okay so actually that fight was a 1-0 for blue team which on paper you'd say mm, good fight guys but it wasn't really that there's nothing really these guys can do now because they didn't kill anyone if they'd killed the enemy team they could have done baron or pushed the inhib down but because these guys are still having to lick their wounds from the fight before and the uh blue team all they have to do is all right more got a bit silly there all the blue team has to do is uh, recall, and they're obviously they're much closer to the uh, they're much closer to to the their base here than the purple team is. Now this is again another example of people overstaying their welcome, doing something good and then just getting too greedy. Vlad is definitely dead here, one hundred percent dead. J Jarvan and Vlad just kind of screw this over. Now if there was think, okay, yeah, blue team could be doing Baron right here, if I were these guys, well, I don't know, actually, if they can get these two towers mid, then that might be a better idea, but Marka gets caught off here defending this tower, he probably didn't see the tower's health, he probably thought it had a bit higher health, but again, towers do not equal safety, especially this late on in the game, people will just jump on you and kill you, even if that tower had stayed alive, Marka would have just died anyway, and no one would have, no one on blue team would have died, but we'll see if they can get this tower, if they're smart, they'll get this tower. Wow, that vein does so much damage. See, this vein has not been playing overly well this game, but this is perfect. Like, if you're behind, if you're... <laughs> Look at all these retreat things being spammed onto vein, these guys. <laughs> if you're if you're behind like vein's team is, the best situation you can hope to be in is still be useful, still give your team a chance to come back into the game. This vein is very, very useful still. Um, she's really strong, so that's good on Vayne's on Vayne's part. If um, they want to win the game, if Blue Team wants to win the game, then they can because Vayne is very useful still. Uh, although they see her, they see her getting walls, but they're not going to be able to do anything about that at all. Um, now I haven't talked about Malkai's uh, build a lot this game, so I've been distracted, but I'll quickly talk about that now. Spirit Visage, um, I think, is an odd choice. It's a good item kind of, but I don't think it's necessary for Maokai. He's not really going to get much benefit from the healing, apart from his passive, which I suppose is enough to argue that he should be getting it. Uh, but the magic resist is cool, 
imagine this is cool, but there's not a lot of it. I mean, he's going to be inevitably, inevitably running into magic damage because of, okay, because of Morgana's AoE. Now, right here, if I were purple team, I take this tower and I do do Baron and then finish the game. Now they're indecisive, which means this tower's going down slower because the other one's doing blue. But right here, disengage from this chase and go take Baron. Okay, or you know, keep keep chasing guys. You can't hear me, so do do what you want. They're not gonna get anything out of it though, and they get nothing out of it. Like I was saying before, the Java's still doing blue buff, which is weird, dumb. Um Will Morg die? No. Uh See, these fights, they're not really getting anything out of them. Again, they didn't kill anyone, but they blew a lot of summoners. They're, now these guys are on low health, low mana, uh, which means that they're just going to go and heal, come back, and, and mop, up, mop up these guys. And now these guys are completely caught out of position. This blue team is completely out of position. Now he misses a bubble. There are three guys on the other side of the wall, too scared to do anything. As the carry bag gets caught out, Maokai the jungler gets caught out. Right here, these guys chase away purple team. These guys should be chasing away and going to Baron. This is the perfect ticket back into the game. They were 7k gold behind when I last mentioned it, and now they're only 2k gold behind. Go do Baron. This is the comeback right here. They're not doing Baron. They should be doing it. Um, I mean, if you ever want to come back and you're in this situation, just... I mean, there have been a lot of, of opportunities that I've said these guys could be doing Baron, because quite frankly, it's all there is to it. Like, these guys could be doing Baron in a lot of opportunities, but they're not. They're choosing not to, which I think is a mistake. And as we see, this game only has about three minutes left. Three minutes left on it, so I don't know what happens, but I mean, we'll see. Um, uh, anyway, back to this uh, Malkai's build, sorry. Spirit Visage, I think, is a weird item. I think it, he should have replaced the Spirit Visage with a Aegis. I think Aegis would have been a better choice here. Uh, Bulwark as well would have been a good choice, just for the aura. And uh, this Spirit of the Ancient Golem is pretty good. Like it, It's from the Spirit Stone. Uh, so he's got like that philo, philo Stone kind of regen and stuff like that. And also he's got a lot of health, which is cool. A bit of armor, which is cool. He clears a bit faster, which is cool. So it's a good item to buy on him. Uh, and this giant spell again, he just, this guy really wants health, but, I, personally, I'll be getting around doing this right now. I would have got an Aegis, instead of Spirit Visage, and then I would just build around doing because the only threat to Maokai right here is Vayne right now. And Blue Team are just gonna give all these opportunities I've been saying, these guys could be doing Baron, and now it's just gonna go down, and no one's gonna do anything about it. Where is the Blue Team? Vayne is bot, okay, so, um, I don't think, right, and Baron's dead, right. This was a really, really weird passage of time in this game. If the blue team gets caught out here because they're not sure where, what purple team has done, or something like that, or because Vayne's bot and they try to defend and they get caught out, or just get caught out because they get bubbled like Janna, if people die on the blue team, then the purple team is now is going to snowball and win the game, basically. So we'll see what happens. I mean, that'll be a really weird way to end the game because blue team were doing so well coming back. Oh, and Morgus has wasted her ult. But will it kill? No. An army heal too strong. But they did, they did blow a lot, though, for that, so we'll see. But <laughs> this was kind of bad by purple team, though, in the sense that they tried to force that, like, Malco was kind of tanking tower. It's like they were trying to take it down for no reason. They just should have like waited or like gone to a different lane or pushed out the creep wave, something like that. It's like, okay, we've got Baron, let's push. Oh, we don't have any creeps. Oh, well, let's just push anyway. And they couldn't do that. Then, okay, Morgus is space check. Like I say, if people get caught out here, this game is going to be over. Now they've got a minion wave, which means they can push really, really hard. Morg isn't here to wave clear. She's dead for another minute. Uh, and Morg's wave clear is the pretty much all the wave clear on this enemy team. Janna's been caught out, which means that she's dead. Surely, yep, she's dead. Now they're going to get this in here. Vlad's getting very aggro. 
I, they, they could just finish the game right here. This should be the end of the game. This is a really weird end to the game. It shouldn't have ended this way, really. Um, Pantheon is bunny hopping with his ultimate, which means he's going to clear out the creeps and then die instantly. Okay. Which is pretty much exactly what happened. Let's focus on Ez, because he's the most exciting guy here. But yeah, and like I said, this game is now over. Pretty much all there is to it. Like I say, I think there are lots of opportunities here for this blue team to get back into the game. Um, purple team kind of throw through this game on a lot of different occasions. Greed was very bad, but that's pretty much the end of the game. It was a very peculiar game, to say the least. A very peculiar ending. Uh, but yeah, that's the end of the game, guys. Um, I'll stop the recording here. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this was Gastro GR. Uh, about 1200, 1300 ELO. Thank you for sending me your replay. Like I said, you can send me your replays at boxdroplow at gmail.com. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.